spring is in the air. Ah, and with it comes flowers. Oh. And pollen. But not all flowers bloom on the same schedule. Spring ephemerals are some of the earliest flowers to bloom, sometimes doing so even before the last snow has melted. And there's lots of cool things about these early blooming flowers. I'm Tony, and today we're going to take a look at four fun facts about spring ephemerals. Number one, they complete their life cycle in just weeks. The word ephemeral means short-lived or seasonal and is a general term that applies to any number of short-lived plants. The plants we're talking about today are spring ephemerals, little wildflowers that grow on the forest floor like Virginia bluebells, or these snowdrops. And while most flowers have months to complete their growing cycle, well, spring ephemerals don't have that luxury. For nearly all plants, sunlight's needed for photosynthesis. But in a forest, that sunlight can be kind of hard to come by, especially if you're a tiny little plant living on the forest floor. But in early spring, before the trees have had a chance to grow their leaves out, sunlight's able to penetrate all the way to the forest floor. And it's this short window that the ephemerals need to take advantage of. And that window doesn't last long, which is why they need to complete their above ground growing cycle so quickly. If they waited a couple months, well, all those leaves would be there and there'd be no precious sunlight. Number two. Size is key. Looking at spring ephemerals like this trillium, you can see it's a pretty small plant, not nearly as big as the sycamore. And even their summer wildflower counterparts tower over them. And the smaller stature works to the ephemeral's advantage. It means they don't need a deep root system, which is really good for getting an early start on growing. And since the soil defrosts from the surface down, they can wake up sooner than any other plant with deeper roots. Staying small also means they can put more of their energy into flowering and reproducing quicker, since they don't need to grow to a tall height before they flower. Number three, ants in your plants. When you think of pollinators, chances are you don't think of ants. Although studies suggest that many species of ants aren't important pollinators since they typically go straight for nectar and avoid picking up pollen altogether, some do pollinate, and when they do, it's usually a small, low-growing plant. Sound familiar? Ants are important to spring ephemerals for another reason, seed dispersal. Many ephemerals, like bloodroot, have fleshy structures on their seeds called eliasomes. These eliasomes are designed specifically to attract ants, providing a fatty and nutritious substance for them. And ants love this stuff. They'll take the seeds back to their colonies and they feed the eliasomes to their larvae. And after the larvae eat all of that eliasome material, all that's left is the seed. These seeds remain viable and oftentimes will germinate right there in the colony, growing the next generation of the plant. And many wildflower gardeners actually enlist ants to help disperse the seeds of their wildflowers by introducing colonies to their gardens. Number four, subterranean living. For much of their lives, spring ephemerals live and grow underground. I mean, makes sense since we just learned that they only spend a month or two above ground doing all that flowering and reproducing. Once the flowering phase is done, these plants die back until it's just a bulb or a root ball is left underground, which is why you don't typically see them while you're walking through the forest in summer and fall. These bulbs don't just spend all that time sitting there underground. Instead, they're taking in nutrients and fortifying themselves so they can survive the winter and begin the whole process all over again the following spring. And if spending that much time underground wasn't impressive enough, the yellow trout lily can actually go through this process for up to eight years before it ever produces its first flower. Definitely something to think about before you pick one. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it a like. And don't forget to follow Lake Metro Parks on social media. Check us out at lakemetroparks.com for lots more info. And until next time, I'm Tony.